Hey guys, I've got a quick video tutorial to show you how you can send a raw HTTP request from Python to a web server. Now, normally in most programming languages, if you were sending an HTTP request, you would use one of the built-in libraries that would format the request and process the response codes coming back and so on. However, we want to look at how you can actually send a raw HTTP request as nothing more than a series of characters to the server and get back basically a string of characters coming back. Now, in order to understand what we're doing, let's take a look at the specification that covers what a client request and server response looks like. So here we have a client request and you can see that it's nothing more than a series of characters formatted in a specific way. The line begins with get, which is the verb, get, post, put, delete, so on, followed by a space, followed by the resource that you want to get from the server, followed by another space, and the protocol, in this case, HTTP 1.1. Following this opening line is a new line and then a series of header fields and values, each separated by a colon and a new line. Now the server response coming back is going to look very similar in that it's a series of characters. It begins with the protocol at the top, a response code and description, so 200 meaning everything worked fine, 300 series meaning there's something moved, 400 series meaning there's something wrong with the client request, and 500 series meaning there's something wrong on the server side. After that we get a new line and we have a series of header fields that are returned. Once the header fields are done we have a blank line followed by the actual body of the response. And if this were an HTML document, you would see the HTML down here at the bottom. So, as you can see, the client request and the server response are nothing more than just a series of text characters. Now, I'll leave a link in the description to the full specification if you want to check that out later. So now, what we're going to do is take a look at the actual Python program. Now, I like to use VI, so I've logged into my uh, Linux server, and I'm going to use VI to edit my Python script, which is uh, I've named as raw underscore HTTP.py. Um, you can use whatever text editor you want. You can name the Python script whatever you like, but we'll take a look at the inside of the text file to see what we have to put in there. So in here we start off the script with what's called a shebang and that's the um, pound sign exclamation mark slash user bin env followed by the actual executable that would be used to run the program. In this case that's the shebang you would use for Python 3. If you want to use Python 2 just change the 3 at the end of the line to a 2 and it would uh, run this file with the Python 2 interpreter. Now the next thing we do is we the next thing we do is we import the socket library and the socket library is that library that allows you to interact with the computer's network card. Next we would declare a new socket and we would use the IP protocol specifically the TCP protocol partnered with the IP protocol and this new socket would be stored in a variable called S. Once we've declared the socket we can then establish a connection to a particular server on a particular port and we would do that operation again on the variable S. So S.connect to a server and a port number. Notice the double parentheses, those are important. Next, once we've established a socket and a connection, we send our request. And we do that by invoking s.send and a series of characters that would match what we would see in the protocol here. So in this case, we might want get slash HTTP1 and then the host 
and you would see that formatted as get slash would be the root document http 1.1 notice the slash r slash n that's a carriage return line feed that's basically the new line you see at the end of this line we then put in our header field of host example www.example.com followed by two sets of carriage return line feeds indicating this is the end of the request if you leave this this off the server will never respond back to you now you'll notice that we've taken the entire string here and put it inside double quotes and then after that we've had a dot encode that operation is actually going to take this string and convert it into bytes because the send operation is not expecting text it's expecting bytes so once we have that done we now move into a while loop the while loop allows us to to receive multiple blocks of data in the response. In this case, we're receiving blocks of 1,024 characters over and over and over again inside the while loop. Each time we get a block of characters, it's stored in this variable called data. Now, if data comes back blank, we know that we're done and we've received all the data we could get. Therefore, the if statement says if the length of data is less than 1, i.e. 0, then break out of this loop. If, however, we did receive data, we want to print it out and circle back around to the top of the loop and try it again, in which case we'll go get another block of data. If it's empty, we'll break out. If not, we will print it out and go back up again. Now, once this loop completes and we've broken out of it, we're going to be good stewards of our resources and we're going to close up our network connection. And that, in a nutshell, is what it looks like to make a raw HTTP request of a um, web server. So we'll go ahead and save and exit out. And we can now change the mode on this file we just created to give it the user the ability to execute this file, which is what the schmod u plus x uh, command will do. So now, if we look at this file, we can see that we have the ability to execute this script. And we do that by typing a dot slash followed by the name of the script. When we run it, what we get back is the actual response data. So you can see in the response data, just like the specification says, it starts off with HTTP 1.1 and your response code. We get back HTTP 1.1 and our response code. Notice the line ends with a carriage return line feed. And then you start seeing these header fields, cache control, content type, date, and so on. The other thing you might notice is that we're not back at our command prompt at the moment. So for whatever reason, we're waiting to see if more data is coming back from the web server. And if you look at it, it doesn't look like it because we can see the end of the HTML document here. So one thing you can do is if it hangs like this, is you can just press control C to break out of it and that will get you out of the the loop okay so this has been an example of how you can create a raw HTTP response or a raw so this is an example of how you can create a raw HTTP request using Python if you were to do this against a different web server the things you'd need to change would be what server you're connecting to and your host field here, as well as which document you're requesting here. Okay, well that concludes this screencast.